Welcome to the Solicam University channel. This video's topic is machining an STL file. Uh, inside of SolidCAM, there's actually a module called machining or milling STL, and we're going to cover that in that video today. So essentially what that is, is it is really just for a STL format file, the kind of file that you would get from a laser scan or, or any other kind of third party uh, software might generate that as well. Now, typically we use STL files for things like stock definitions and, um, and various other kind of simulation related uh, functions. But here, what we're gonna show you is where you can use that STL file originally and program right off of it. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to tools, solid cam, new, and Normally, like we always see, we have the modules of milling, turning, mill turn, and wire ADM. So if you were using those types of machines, you would use those modules. But we always seem to skip over the milling STL. And that is, again, because it's really only for use with STL format files. So if I click on that module, it appears to open up a SolidWorks model or maybe a SolidCAM, SolidWorks uh, window. Really, all it's going to do is just skip over that and come right to this screen. So this is the same screen we always see, but you'll see that it, it has blacked out the create cam part. That's because you can only really create this as an external file. We're opening up a third-party format. It's neither a SolidWorks or a SolidCAM file to start. Um, and also, we're going to skip over these areas too, because essentially all this is all driven by the solid, uh, the, uh, the STL file. And we'll find that here. Usually this is auto-populated by the SolidWorks model that you started from. But again, here we're starting from the STL. So we're gonna go to Browse, and we'll go to the location of my STL file. Okay, and I would choose from one of these files. So let's say we just choose the baby group. And from there, I can say where I'd like to keep it, the name of the file, and the units I'd like to work in. Now, I could click OK, uh, but it is an STL file, and it's actually rather a large uh, STL file. So I'm not going to click on this, because what that will do is it'll open up the solid cam external file and begin to translate that STL file into a usable SOLIDWORKS model. But I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to hit Cancel, and I'll open up a pre-programmed version of that file. So I've already done the translation. And I've already laid down a couple of tool paths, set up my coordinate system, uh, but essentially that is the next step. Once you translate that STL file into a solid cam external file, you can add your, your coordinate system, you can add your stock and your target definitions, similar to what you would have done if you started with a regular SOLIDWORKS model. The only difference here is when you first start from the, the STL translation, um, your coordinate system, you won't really have a top face to work with. So if I open up, let's just say we open up a, a Mac 2 position 1, just as an example. Um, you won't be able to use select face because uh, maybe your, your STL doesn't have a flat face that represents where you'd like the top to be. Uh, in this case, I did have a, actually a top face, or uh, uh, one face I could use. I chose the bottom face of this translation because luckily it had a, uh, a, a nice horizontal face, and then I just clicked on change to opposite. Um, but if you only had the shell of your part, and if we take a look at Baby Groot here, there really is nothing flat on the top for me to work with, and if I didn't have a flat bottom, uh, then I would use some of the other options here. I would use Normal to Current View, if that would help me out. I would use uh, Defined by Three Points, so I could choose three points along any one of these, these uh, these data cloud points. Again, STL is essentially just a data cl cloud, so there definitely will be some points here that I could use to define my coordinate system. Let's say, for instance, I didn't have these flat faces, but I did have the outside edges of the surfaces. I could say, defined by data points, I could say, let's just, for the sake of argument, say that is the origin, that is my X positive direction, and then this would be my Y positive direction. X, Y, and then I get a Z. So essentially, all the options are still existent in this module. It's just you'll have to use them a little differently, uh, depending on the geometry you have on the screen. So if I jump out of that, we can take a look at our stock. And the stock is pretty much the same thing. There is no model to be relative to. So you'll have to use absolute coordinates with the coordinate system that you just created. And then that way, the, the model box, you can define yourself. So the usual uh, x positive, x negative, y positive, y negative, 
all those inform all that information there, uh, it's no longer relative to the model. You can actually put in absolute coordinates and put in uh, your absolute coordinates. Now, in this case, this translated nicely to a set of sur surfaces. So when I said relative to model, I actually went to CAD selection and chose what was brought in in my design model, and it put a um, about an expand box around this collection of services. So I was actually able to do that here using the coordinate system that I created and relative to model. But again, usually STL, if it doesn't translate too well, you might want to use just the, um, the uh, absolute coordinates. But relative to model will work if it translates nicely enough, nicely enough and you can use the relative to model CAD selection and choose the design model. Uh, and then lastly, the target is actually the STL file. There's nothing for me to choose here unless I need to relocate it to, uh, to a, new, um, a new file. But essentially, it brings in the target as is. And then from there, you can program your usual toolpath. Uh, now, obviously, some of the 2.5D toolpaths, like Pocket Profile, they might not apply because this is a very uh, 3D heavy uh, part, such as Baby Groot's face. So I use basically just the, uh, the target recognition 3D tool paths, uh, the kind of thing that would just look at the model itself and doesn't even require me to actually choose any contours. In this case, for the final HSM, I actually did create a circle uh, to better define uh, Baby Groot's face, but essentially it is still just regular 3D programming. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Uh, you can send us your parts and your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.